Sports Night Amplified with Andile on Metro FM. Monday through Friday, 6 to 7 p.m. Game over. Walk up to it. That is the sound of the entry of this year's show, The Sports Not Amplified with Andy. Thank you so much for touching his team. They do it again uh, tomorrow between 3 and 6. For the last time this week, of course, uh, it's a weekdays between 3 and 6 before we come in and do the thing at 6 o'clock all the way to 7 o'clock, just in case you missed it. Some results um, from yesterday. We saw Morocco beating Tanzania by three goals to zero. That was, uh, uh, I think it was Sirius Uha and El Nezri scoring those goals. And then DR Congo drawing with Zambia 1-1. Today, we've already seen one game, Equatorial Guinea versus Guinea-Bissau. This was the second match of both these teams. In Group A, Nigeria and Ivory Coast are up next now. That's a huge game as well. But in the previous game, Equatorial Guinea 4, Guinea-Bissau Two, the first hat trick from Nsui of the tournament has been scored. Uh, Equatorial Guinea is Nsui uh, getting a hat trick there, and uh, Miranda scoring the other goal. 4 2 is how it ended. Yeah, nah, it's heating up now. Later on this evening, there's another one. You can join me and my panel. Um, I think I'll be with Steve Compella as well as Coach Ludlu. We're giving you Egypt versus Ghana. Yeah. Such a big match. Egypt versus Ghana. Both of them wounded. But we'll get into that and so much more a little bit later on. We take a break from the Africa Cup of Nations for a little bit. Many of you, more than you know, normal, and I get it and I appreciate it and I, I do my best whenever I can. But there's nothing I get asked more than, Andile, my child is good at sport A, B, C or D. What can we do? Where can we take them? And in, in, in most developed countries... Uh, you know, the, the, there's a sporting club in and around your neighborhood. There's a sporting club in your neighborhood where your kids go. And from there, depending on their levels of talent, they then get put into, you know, different sectors that will help in abetting uh, uh, their talents. I don't always have an answer for you in South Africa. I don't always have an answer when somebody says, my child is really good at uh, gymnastics or my child is really good even, even at football. I don't always have an answer for you because... It's not that easy. There aren't just, you know, schools layered across the country that are really good at taking care of talent, um, you know, that are, are, are transport friendly in and around you, et cetera, et cetera. But the one beacon of hope that South Africa has always had is the same school that gave us Dane Clayt, Bernard Parker, Keegan Dolly, Stephen Pina, Pagamani Matlambi, uh, and the list goes on of, of, of young players that went there and, you know, I've gone on to do something. Bryce Moon was another one. Bryce Moon was another one. Um, Siama Ben is another one. There's so many that went to the same place. And it's a place that I often say, hey, go take a look at this place. Up until today, I didn't know the full story of what is known as the Transnet School of Excellence based in Kempton Park. It's given us all of these players. And if you're a, a mother or father who wants the best for your kid, it's one of those places where they guaranteed you know, that they're going to excel in school, but also what they'll do in football will get the attention of the professionals. This past weekend, I get a call from my good friend, uh, Butila Rafolo. He says, have you seen what's happening at the School of Excellence? And I say, hey, you know, I know that every year they need an intake of students because every year they lose students to senior teams in the DSTV Premiership. They lose students that are matriculating, therefore can't be at the school anymore. So they need to replenish by getting more students. I've never quite known how they get those kids. But when I saw the thousands of parents and kids who were there over one day, I thought to myself, surely this can't be it. What has happened to our beloved school of excellence? And when last did I hear that it's the Transnet School of Excellence? Because it's no longer that. Butil Rafolo, former NEC member out of the South African Football Association, sits with me. He was there, um, you know, uh, as somebody who this was a project he was fond of at the time that he was at SAFA. Buti, welcome. Thank you, Andy. Uh, good evening, Metro FM listeners. I wasn't only fond of the School of Excellence. I was sitting in that board for over 10 years. But I think it's fitting before I start to talk about the School of Excellence to pay respects to the departed coach Mabena. Mm. who is synonymous with everything that is the school of excellence. We didn't give him enough flowers. We tried to give him as much as we could, but we can still do more. Having said that, Annie, the school of excellence was started 
correctly as a pathway for players to really make it to the top. And we'll be speaking to the founder in a couple of minutes, by the way. The person whose brainchild it was, former Bafana Bafana player, whose brainchild it was to start the School of Excellence and went and got the funding and and, and put it all together. We'll speak to him in just a few. Correct. Neil Tovey, I presume you're talking about. Of course. Having said that, one player now in the current national squad in AFCON, Obre Modiba, he comes from the School of Excellence. It's a funny fact that some people say he was developed by NetBank. It's a funny story. But he comes from the School of Excellence. He's a product from there. But the reason I, I was chatting with you last week is because getting students into the School of Excellence has always been a year-long process where our coaches would go out to the various regions, identify the young boys under less... Uh, traumatic and full of pressure situations and literally say to three or four of them we are coming for you keep polishing your act and then they come for them six seven months later around august they spend a week at the school of excellence they play football until we really decide who's the best player it has now become an event that happens one day while it looks good possibly for advertisers it's horrible for us that understand what it means to go for trials of your life and partly this has to do with us South Africans, especially SAFA, having actually abandoned the project of football development, not only at the School of Excellence, across the entire value chain. No more f- schools football to develop players, no more talent identification development. SAFA's members are schools, but they don't govern the schools. SAFA's members are universities, they don't govern them. The PSL, you might think that SAFA is a member of the PSL. The PSL is a member of SAFA. SAFA has completely lost its ground when it comes to development. And therefore, our talented players are not being polished to the point where they can. So if if people ask you what is the pathway that is correct, do you have money? Then develop your kids privately, take them to Europe or somewhere. Maybe they will reappear on the other side and then they will play football and make a living out of it. We have completely so abandoned if, the process. And, and like I said, this is if you have a, a young child who you think is talented in football, and many of you do, because you, know, you, you, you tell us so, are you saying to me that the chances of my child being discovered organically are zero? And that the best way to do is to be financially able to back him, put some money behind him, and go pay exorbitant amounts of money from these private institutions or just take him to Europe, which is what a lot of the white... If if you go and you look in Europe, so many South African-born players are there who've never played a single minute in South Africa because their parents said, we see talent in you, let's move to Portugal, let's move to Greece, let's move to Turkey. We can't afford to do that, Buti. Well, it is because the system is dead. First of all, There's no work being done in schools. The the pipeline in itself is dead. Even those kids will make a living in football, but they are highly unlikely to come into the suffer system. You see, we have a coach, Hugo Bruce, very good coach, but he's working in a flawed system. Because as we speak today, Andil, the chap said rugby, have an idea, 60-70% of who's going to play the next World Cup. We don't. Because suffer is not putting those things in place. It's not that we don't have the resources for it. We just don't have the wherewithal. We are not interested. And, and this we have done gradually over time. It started with a fight between Danny and Shoes over schools. Instead of expanding the program, it was killed. Universities are the, on their own frolic. We, that's where we should be getting some of our players. If you go and look at Hugo Bruce's squad, half of them don't have never played in universities. The best players that play in all these international tournaments in Africa, FASU and FISU, don't feature. Because we, the, the system is not working and SAFA is the one that's supposed to bring it together. Now, in order to do that, you need people that are sufficiently educated and understanding that it is a system that you work on it constantly. As the guys in rugby are doing, it's not rocket science. But we are not doing it because we have consistently put in the people at the helm of SAFA that have got nothing to offer. I said the same thing about Dr. Jordan when he wanted to be president as he is now, I think three years ago in the studio. His time is past, but also the people around him. And r- the reality is, it's not only SAFA. The system first collapsed when the majority of black South Africa decided not to play at schools. The unions led this process. 
where we stopped playing. Our kids don't play. When we go and meet with the Department of Education and we talk about sports development, they have decided to call that in my province, it's called sports enrichment. It's almost like a by-the-way. But this is, has been an integral part of teaching any kid. Get them to do physical education and let them play. All of these things have been taken out of the equation because the teachers wanted to spend as minimal time working as possible. That nonsense has caught up with us. We have to fix it. <laughs> it includes even at SAFA. Otherwise, we are dead in the water. Let's take a very quick air break. Uh, and when we come back on the other side, we'll continue with this. But, babes, we'll go to the School of Excellence as well and speak to Coach Lefama Tebula, who hosted these trials that saw thousands of kids getting five minutes of an opportunity of a lifetime. Sports Night Amplified with Andile on Metro FM, Monday through Friday, 6 to 7 p.m. Welcome back. And uh, this show is in and around, um, you know, what we all go through as parents, just wanting the best for our children in sport. How do we get them in? How, how, how do we end up seeing the ones that play? How do they end up there? Very, 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 very often people say to me, it's a money thing, Andile. You know, even what we saw at the School of Excellence over the weekend, you know, oh, the children that will get picked is because their parents have money and they'll pay. I refuse to think that you have to have money in order for your talent to be recognized. But maybe I live in a bubble that refuses to admit what is glaringly true. Let's speak about, I mean, we spoke about the overall arching issues and challenges here. And we'll get back to them, Buti, because I don't think it's, it's, it's a once uh, conversation type thing. But what happened at the School of Excellence that had the whole country, had people like me, when seeing that, gasping and saying, what is that? And many might say, but what's wrong with that? If you're having open trials and you're saying everybody must come, you're giving everybody an opportunity that is equal to say anybody and everybody, regardless of where you come from, that can play, bring them to these trials. And it's the lack of the draw. Whoever showcases their talent and gets spotted may play. So what is the issue? Look, what's happening on Saturday, it's, it's a failure of the system over time. What that that is no way to identify talent talent gets o- identified over time through processes back home so that when you come here you've dealt with the nerves and we know that you are the best of the best where you come from so what was happening last week it's more an issue that the coaches have to get 30 kids into a class so that the school can have their quota it is a very unsatisfactory process this is happening because transnet when I was still at Transnet, I represented football. There was a time when uh, the CEO then of Transnet wanted to exit the school. I had to sit down with him and explain to him the development of the boys and why we don't win, that this thing is a five-year process where we teach these people first the, the basics. You have to go through that process. When I left Safa, Safa wanted to put people in. It never got around to putting them in. At the table of Transnet, despite its many challenges, there have been no people to explain football development to Safa. There are people that should have done that. There are NEC members that were touted to go back and be set with the Safa, with the Transnet Mandarins to do this. They have not done it. I don't know whether they have not done it because they don't understand the development pathway themselves or they did not get whatever they wanted. But the reality is the teachers and the coaches are left on their own. What I now hear is that School of Excellence is going to be taken over by the Department of Education. I'm not aware of anybody saying to the coaches, this is your pathway, this is how we're going to deal with this thing. The current people are focused on education, teachers, and so on because it's the Department of Education. This thing has entirely collapsed. What should have happened, what we have asked must happen is you need to have nine school of excellences. You need to adopt schools in each region that are football playing schools so that like in the old days, the players that are said to be the best, we see them playing day in, day out. So that's why I say in as much as Safa is not doing its part, the footballing system in the country has collapsed because kids don't play football day in, day out. Those that do are from the affluent schools, former Model C and private schools. Safa cannot see them, does not see them. They go elsewhere for their development. If you drive around Johannesburg uh, in Saturday afternoons or around Cape Town, you will see them playing day in, day out. But they don't get into this system. 
we're going to have a problem 10 years down the line. We're going to be saying, who are these players? Who are all these white players that are... We're going to start our nonsense that we do because we and have I, not done our work. a conversation work. I've been asking a lot to, to say where the... I mean, we, we're in a democratic country that gives opportunities to all, right? Where the Indian, where the, 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 the colored, where are the mixed race, where are the white kids in our professional football? You can't tell me they don't exist. It is because generally if you are affluent like their parents, you know that the system at Safa doesn't work. You had a program now about some Safa people taking bribes at the development leagues. You don't want to put your kids through that. They don't want to put an effort through all of this process and then it dies down. It is generally accepted in the Safa circles that we bribe games. We have NEC members, at least from my province, who can sit in a meeting and say we are going to develop that team. It is the one that will win the league at the end of the season. We have this kind of thinking. Hmm. The kids get destroyed. They, why should we play football in this space? Now, if you are an affluent parent, you are not going to expose your talented football kid to the SAFA system. You will try and find an alternative system. And the view is not to play for Bafana Bafana anymore. It's to make money play in Real Madrid or go and play in the Saudi League and make a living. We're losing a lot of players that could be helping us in the national team because we have messed this whole thing up. Let's go to the School of Excellence now. Um, the coach there, Lefa Matebula, now joins us on the line. Lefa, thank you so much for joining us, coach. Good evening and good evening to the listeners and thank you for the opportunity. I hope that uh, that line does hold. I hope that that line uh, is going to be steady through this conversation, man. Lefa, Lefa, you hosted trials this past weekend. Talk to me about that. I mean, uh, from what I've read, you you reported that there were 4,158 kids that arrived at 8 a.m. and were there till 8 p.m. 378 kids were being processed per hour. Is this the right way, the right system? Is this how the School of Excellence now functions in getting their talent? Um, normally, let me just put it out. Normally, we'll go to uh, different uh, provinces and uh, working with uh, SAFA regions to conduct trials. And then within that process, we also have what we call open, open day trials where people come to the school of excellence. And uh, at this moment, because we are no longer going out, we are now going to have an influx of people coming to the school of excellence. And that's why we have an overwhelming attendance this time around. You know what, this line is not very good, man, um, uh, Alifa. I'm not sure if you, because it sounds like you're driving. I'm not sure if you can pull over or if you can stop. Uh, I did the maths on this thing. I did the maths on this thing. You've got 4,158 kids, right, being assessed at uh, 378 kids per hour. That means each kid is given six minutes to showcase their talent. That's all you get, six minutes, and this is in a game so if you don't get the ball in that six minutes or if you get it once or twice in that six minutes that's it that's all you get indeed and if by some dint the people you are playing with are from the same team they don't want to pass to you you know the story so it is wholly inadequate but lefa and them have to have kids that go into the next class i think now we've got lefa becomes, back they're, now. they're quite forced to do this thing let's try this line again now, lefa are you there yeah i'm here much better, much better. You were still explaining to me, Lefa, because I was talking about 4,158 kids being assessed mm. over uh, 378 kids, uh, a, a player rather, per mm. hour, which gives each kid about six minutes in order to perform uh, in, in those small-sided games, those 9v9s that you're doing. Uh, I look at all of that and I saw the pictures. You know, if you're a kid that gets there at 8 a.m. and mm. you only go on uh, uh, at uh, 1 p.m., Mm. You got, were you guys providing food and drinks for them? No, no. normally we don't provide food for, for trialists. Uh, trialists bring their own food. But let me just correct one thing. Remember, we are not just using two or one field. We are using multiple fields. And on average, uh, the players were playing about uh, 10 minutes one way, and then it's two halves with immediate change. So that gives you about 20 minutes. So we, had, we were using about seven fields divided into 45 meters by 60. So it's a small-sided game. Um, yeah, well, people will not be satisfied with how we do it, but this is how all these other players have been identified throughout the years. 
No, throughout the years, it hasn't been quite like that. Throughout the years, and I've got Booty here who was just telling us uh, how it's always worked. You've always gone to the regions. You've always identified players. Those players are then have gone through a regimen in order to pick the very best of the best. It wasn't one day come uh, play 10 uh, by 10 and then let's see who the best is. No, well, I agree. I think that's, let's put it in context. Remember, the first process that we do is to go to the provinces. So we used to do about 60 uh, SAFA regions per, per year. And then in, also included, it will be an open day at the School of Excellence. But because you are no longer going out to the provinces, you are not going to have people coming to the School of Excellence. And that's why you are having such large numbers. Also- but in terms of the technical specification, the way we've been da- doing trials has been done that way. The only difference being that we are not going to the provinces, and this time around we had an overwhelming attendance to... Which is uh, which is uh, right, Ronalefa, because if mm. you go into the provinces and you're going all over, you've got a 1,000 kids, you've got 500 mm. kids, it's a lot better. We're speaking about mm. over 4,000 kids, and mm. you, not every kid, you're saying they must bring their own, not every kid can bring their own lunch. The kids that got there at 8 and only got to take to the field at 4, you can imagine mm. the, the the state of that child. You can imagine, you know, the the, the state of, of 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 how they're feeling at that time. On top of the nerves and the anxiety that they're feeling, there's hunger. There's all sorts of things. So the fact that yes, we've done it this way doesn't mean mm. it's right, does it? Well, uh, well, for, I think let's take it this way. This is our reality on the ground. And uh, for those kids, if you were to ask them. If you have an option of not doing the trials or doing them, which ones you, would you take? And we know they're going to want to do the trials. So in an in a ideal world, yes, you want to provide food and T-shirts and water and so forth. But it, at the current moment, with the limited funds, this is the best that we could do to, to, to recruit uh, players. And our hearts are bleeding. We can do better. But the circumstances uh, dictated that we do the trials as it is. And uh, there's not much that we can do as coaches. How many coaches, professionals, do you have uh, assisting you in assessing these boys? Uh, we we had uh, the the entire staff, which is uh, five coaches, and then we had uh, two guys that volunteered to assist. So on the field, there were about seven coaches that were uh, assessing four thousand kids. Players. Yeah, you had five coaches and two assistants. I'm not going to count the assistants. I'm talking about the coaches. Five coaches assessing. Almost uh, 4,158 kids over a 12 hour period. Yeah. Well, it's seven, it's not five, it's seven coaches. Seven. I'm saying, what I'm saying, the ones that are assisting me, they are not employed at the school, but seven they are coaches, coaches themselves. Yeah. In 12 hours, between eight yes. and eight, they're standing, yeah. they're looking at 4,158 kids who are playing yeah. 10 minutes a half each. Yeah. This is how we source and find talent. Uh, like I said, Andy, like, this is the circumstances we find ourselves under. I'm just trying to paint the picture. It. I'm just trying to paint the picture, Lefa. I'm not saying it's your fault. You're doing the best yeah. of what you've been given. Yeah. But we're just trying to paint a picture here to say, even for you, when you hear that, it's, it's, I can admit, listen, I've done television and radio my whole life, right? Yes, yes. If you say to me that I must do it for 12 hours, I can guarantee you now, as something that I am very efficient in, I'm mm. very efficient at it, Lefa. But yeah. I can tell you now that in the fourth hour, in the sixth mm. hour, I am no longer performing at my best. And I say this to say, you might be very efficient at your job as a coach and a scout because you've done it for years. Mm. But mm. I can tell you now that in the fourth hour, sixth hour, eighth hour, those kids that you're seeing there is not the same as what you're seeing in the first three hours. Well, I mean, that's, that's human nature. But I, I'm, I'm saying, look at it from our, our point of view. You 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 expecting about a thousand thousand five to two thousand kids has been the norm, and suddenly we have uh, overwhelming attendance. Do you then close the gate and say, look, we are only doing two thousand, and we, we, that's our capacity, or you try and process all the players? And for us, it, it was a commitment that look, any player that's inside the yard will will give him an opportunity. Of course, there will be those. Uh, suspicion whether you are as the day goes by you are becoming efficient and so forth uh, the mind gets tired but at the end of the day we committed ourselves to say anyone who's inside the yard we are going to stay here until we finish and that's why we finish late but under ideal circumstances you should have enough coaches who can rotate some take a break and so forth but uh, these are the conditions that we are working under 
Uh, just I want to dispel some 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 things here when I leave for man because mm. we're getting a lot of uh, texts and calls of people speaking about mm. uh, um, kids that uh, you know felt under the weather that 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 uh, couldn't withstand the circumstances. I don't know whether it was the hunger, the heat, the the the, the uh, deprivation of, of of drinks. Maybe uh, somebody even speaking about. Uh, kids uh, three of them mm. who passed on mm. uh from the trials on their way from Bethlehem because they traveled all the way from Bethlehem do you know anything about any of those yeah no also let's also uh, pass our condolences i did speak to the three parents uh the accident happened somewhere i think they say are 26 on their way back so um it was after the the, the event yeah, but uh, in terms of, there are people that came in, and of course, because of the share numbers, they might have left earlier without trialing. But uh, the reality of the matter is that anyone who, who was there, we were able to process them until we finish, even under flat lights. Then I'm saying it's not an ideal circumstance, but when the attendance is huge, you you are forced to, 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 to go all the way. I mean, under normal circumstances, we could have said, let's pre-register, but again, people will still be complaining that you are denying uh, uh, grassroots players an opportunity. So perhaps maybe as the, the, the guest there said that um, if we have more schools, it might uh, prevent the influx uh, from other provinces into Houten, uh, into one thing. So, so the message, we try our best there. Yeah. That message coming from Tony Masego mm-hmm. says, I trust this mm-hmm. finds you well as you'll be interviewing the um, the founder who we'll speak to in just a couple of minutes is Neil Tovey, of course. Can you guys send condolences to the families of the three kids who passed mm. away returning from the trials there from yeah. Bethlehem? And this is this is this is because now everybody in the provinces has to get yeah. into a car, put kids in a car, drive all the way to Gauteng, drive back mm. to wherever it is they might be from. They were driving from Bethlehem when the mm. incident and the accident happened. And mm. once again, it, 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 it's it's not you, Lefa. We're just trying to paint mm. a picture here. Of what's okay. happened, and it's a, it's a sad, yeah. sad one. But this is what we're speaking about. Now yeah. we've got three kids who one day had hopes of Bafana Bafana. Instead uh, of coming home and saying to the parents, "We're going to the school of excellence," their parents are preparing for funerals. And and the cuts that we have dealt with are simply because we have not put resources in the right place. We know that we've spent resources on some place where we are now not doing anything on the outskirts of Soweto. These things are not correct. And we are now putting a person like Lefa in a tight spot as if it is him who's created this problem. And, 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 hence, and, hence and we're suffer. stretching to say it yes. is not Lefa. He's merely a worker, um, you know, like me and you Absolutely. here, doing the best he can. And, and like I said before, we went to the regions precisely to minimize this kind of risk of traveling at night, post fatigue and all of these things. This is where we are now. And it is not that we don't have the resources in this country to do this. It is just that we are not properly focused to do this. Now we have kids that have passed on. And let's pass our sincere condolences to the parents and to the families of these kids who had a dream that they will go and play football. They were pursuing their dreams. These are the things that we shouldn't do, and this is where we have collapsed the School of Excellence. But then again, the School of Excellence is not on its own in the entire collapse of our football ecosystem, if you think about it, especially from the developmental side. This is a problem that we need to really look at and say, how do we fix it? We will always have talented players, but if we don't polish that talent, it can't stand up at the time when the competition is on the heat to win things. We do that very well in cricket, in rugby, in swimming and elsewhere. We don't do it in football. It's the same kids. It's the same gene pool. It's not as if it's other people coming from anywhere. We in football have not been doing things right because we are sticking with the old. And we need to change. If, if you send your child to these trials, please go with them. Because there was another incident at um, uh, Panorama Trials where a, a child um, passed on because they sat in the heat... They were hungry, anxious, and, and all of those things. A 15-year-old collapsed during the trials and passed on. You know, So situations like that are not situations that we'd like to, 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 to come across. But if you're a parent or you know, a, a person who's in charge of, of, of kids, a coach, whatever, uh, uh, wherever it is that you're staying, please reach out to us oh, now okay. and speak to us on 86 or send us a WhatsApp on 60 Now, one of the people that knows all too well about the school of excellence you know when when neil tovey founded the school one of the people he called on to say 
come and be a part of this because you, you've got you've got a neck for this and you can do it. And he was part of founding some amazing players. Is Kevin Johnson, who's now the coach out at Kaiser Chiefs. We reached out to Kevin and, and have a listen to what Kevin had to say about this particular issue. Hi, Timothy. I don't know if this will help you, my friend, but uh, regarding the school, yeah, uh, the starting line, I think, is uh, to do with how we started the school. The school was actually started by Neil Tovey, and the coaches involved was Sam Mbata, Farouk Khan, Mandla Mazibuko, Zunaid Mal, and Kevin Johnson. In saying that, I think uh, the first crop of players brought in by the school was probably only about 40 children or 40 boys. And uh, going forward, how the boys were selected was always the school going out to the different provinces, and this was always led by Sam, going out to the different provinces and selecting particular players within the province to maintain the intake and the guys, the boys that were leaving the school that had finished their matric or had either been promoted to some of the PSL teams within South Africa at the time. But uh, that's how we, we selected players and that's how we selected players for the future. We never brought them to the school for trials. We always went out to the different provinces in order to make sure that the representation within the school had at least one or two children from the nine provinces that we have in South Africa. So in a nutshell, that is how we selected players going forward from the initial plus minus 40 children that started the school under the management of Neil Tovey, Farouk Khan, Sam Mbata, Mandam Mazibuko, Zuneid Mal, myself, Ted Dimitro. That's how the school started. So I hope this answers your question and I hope it uh, gives you a lot of insight as to how the school actually started. Thank you. Appreciate it there. Kevin Johnson, uh, coach at Kaiser Chiefs, of course, one of the founding coaches out at the School of Excellence. Now, the brains behind it all, former captain of Bafana Bafana and Kaiser Chiefs, Neil oh. Tovey, uh, joins us now. Neil, thank you so much for talking to us and welcome. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, but uh, also condolences to the families of the kids. Uh, sad news, although we don't know too much particulars, but yeah, um, very, very sad news, yeah. I mean, Neil, we speak glowingly of the School of Excellence uh, whenever we did because of, you know, just the churning out of, of, of some great players in this country. But you look at the situation from this past weekend, I'm pretty sure the furthest thing from your mind when you sat there at those Transnet offices many, many years ago and said, I have a vision. Yeah, I mean, it, sh- it just shows you that you need to have things done correctly and properly. Um and effectively, uh, you know, you, whether a club wants to hold trials or anyone wants to hold trials, you cannot have that number of, 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 of kids. How do you look effectively well? And how do you choose effectively well by so many numbers of kids? You cannot do it. Not, it's not feasible. It's not possible. And um, that's why when we first started, um, you know, a lot of the kids, as we mentioned, were, were were pre-selected from, first of all, the Neil Tovey football clinics that I had, the 17 football clinics that I had around the, the, the country in the different provinces. So that effectively gave us a start and and, 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 and some way uh, of, of the high, highly talented kids that were, were based around the country. So it has to be done with effective management. It can't just be done ad hoc. And, and, and that's, that's where people don't, don't quite understand. But, and I don't want to say where did it go wrong, Neil, because the fingers keep getting pointed at in the same direction. But 
what, how do we then move forward? How do we resolve this? How do we have talent finding missions in this country not be a mission and a, perhaps a, a planned funeral for parents? Okay, the, the the effect. Why it was so effective is that the the one the management of the whole project was was really really effective. Um, from the first person with John Smith, I've got to commend John Smith because he he head up. Uh, he was a head, uh, heading up uh, a school, um, um, Eslin Park, which was a transnet um, uh, sort of um, facilities that they then educated their own transnet people, and they had uh, facilities, uh, sporting facilities. So they had living quarters for the boys and everything. So it was uh, done effectively from the management there, and I, and I was the GM of the school. And then you had really, really talented coaches, as you know. A lot of them have even gone into the PSL and, and headed up uh, top PSL teams and, and the coaching structures. And Farouk Khan has his own his own development structure. So they obviously learned learned from that whole perspective of of how to manage an effective school of excellence. Uh, or academy, for that matter. And there are processes that have to be put in place. You know, um, we also had a register as a, as a, as, as a private school. And, and we brought on Steve Pillar to head up the, the, the teaching side and, and, and acquired uh, educated uh, teachers to, to give these kids a really balanced life of education and, and, and football. So it was effectively managed very, very, very well. And um, so, yeah, um, it's, a, it's a pity that, that you know, it, it, and you, in this country needs each one of those in every, in, in, in every province. If we can get a school of excellence in every province, you'll be churning out talent, uh, not just for, for the local clubs, but in, in the overseas market. And, and and have the caliber of the South African Bafana Bafana player at, at a much higher level. Neil Tovey, listen, we need to have this conversation properly when we're not reflecting on a weekend and not uh, speaking specifics, but speaking entirely about development and perhaps sharing the good news story over the years that is the School of Excellence. But thank you so much for always taking our call. We really appreciate it here on Metro FM. Thank you very much. Thank you. That is Neil Tovey, um, the brains and the founder of the School of Excellence. I'd like to hear from you. Booty is still here with me. Um, we're going to keep uh, Leffer as well with us. Uh, Chiwis, um, the calls are just going crazy because I can imagine there's a story for everyone. I can imagine it. I mean, I've done trials with my daughter, um, Araceli, who plays netball. You know, the trials for Provincial, the trials for Gauteng, the trials for Circuit. And I can tell you now, it's, 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 it's not this painful. It's not this painful. She gets a couple of rounds of playing with other girls. Uh, As a young man, I did trials as well, trying to get my feet into football. And never did I ever worry about anything. But here we are. Let's take a course. Um, Timmy, we're going to go straight into it. Uh, We're not going to take a break here. Let's go straight into it because there's not much time and I'd like to cover as many as possible. If we can try to keep it as brief so we can take as many as possible, I really would appreciate it um, so that we can try and, 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 and ascertain where it is that we are. So let's go straight into it. Hi, welcome. Mitch River. Hey, yes, it is. Talk to me. Talk to you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Man, uh, look, uh, this recent said to one of my boys to Solomon Masango where Tears Galaxy are having trials on the 6th and the 7th. I remember that. Yes, Tears Galaxy had uh, trials in Pumalanga, yeah. To pay the pay. Firstly, you have to pay. You like you needed to pay for. Oh, the you know what? This line is not great. This line is not great. But I remember TS Galaxy announcing that they're going to be having trials. Um, I think it was for their development as well as, of course, uh, if anything, for their senior team. And you're right; they were charging. They were charging. Uh, I had forgotten how much it is, but it seems the number you're saying there's 300 bucks is how much they were charging. And that went against everything I've ever said to parents whenever they ask. Because I've always said, if they ask you to pay, don't go. It's a scam. Uh, but this was real. This was TS Galaxy. Um, I remember them having tweeted that. But let's go to Taba in Val. Taba. Hi, it's uh, Andy Les Tabang from the Val, right? Yes. Um, so I was there on Saturday. Uh, what was the training was, <laughs> it was unacceptable. You know, um, 
you got a feeling that these guys already had their own players before our children could even try it. The reason why I'm saying this, I'm going to just raise two major points. The first one, when we got there at half past seven in the morning, uh, when the registration started, there was no one from the school. Maybe there was one official from the school itself. And then all the parents, including myself, we had to help register the, the children. And what I noticed about registering the children, I was one of the guys registering. Even if you write a wrong number of the parent that they're supposed to be calling back uh, if the child did well, no one cares because it's just a rushed process where you're just uh, filling in the forms for the players to go and uh, play. Mm. And then secondly, secondly, uh, uh, my child eventually got to try and around half past 12 during the day. I was watching, I was there. You know, I was watching the so-called scout the whole time. Uh, the game, uh, they played two hours of 12 minutes, which was 24 minutes. Probably in the 20, 24 minutes, he only watched the game for three or four minutes. The whole time he was watching the other way, he was watching, like doing his own things, and I was sitting there literally just watching him to see if he is identifying talent, is he taking something on the paper that he's got. So you could see that it was just a, you know, a paper process where we just had to be there, but they have their own, uh, they have their own people. So that's my humble opinion. Uh, thank you, Andile.